Yahweh is still on his throne, prayer changes everything, and praise can move mountains. Lord Yahweh, let us be attentive to your word, humble and obedient every day, that we will become vessels of your honor. This message is in regards to a yoke of bondage. There are some people who refuse to let go because they remember the way someone made them feel, even though they are not truly in love with that person at all. We live in a wicked society that has confused the act of sex with the whole embodiment of love. People have been so entirely misled that they don't even realize that fulfilling carnal lust is not loving anyone but themselves. Carnal lust is just the base desire which is just a feeling, with no more fortitude or devotion to the person you're with than a drug addict craving his next fix. Any subsequent relationship that arises from it is nothing more than a carnal sex union that is easily broken when someone else comes along that fits their desired characteristics more so or makes them feel the way that they have become addicted to feeling. Hence, sex addiction. This becomes very evident when a person to whom the addict currently is being gratified by realizes that there is no love in it, or sees that there is no devotion to them on the other part, person's part due to their infidelity, flirting with others, or other means. It also becomes evident when the person is treated like dirt most of the time, but when the other person wants their fix, they suddenly become nice and oh so caring, just to get what they want. No one wants to be unloved, but to be craved for superficial sexual gratification is, with no true love or devotion is far worse. Men are to love their wives as Christ loved the church, and Jesus told the woman at the well that we are to worship Father God in spirit and in truth. I'm going to turn to the word to expand on this point. Ephesians 5 verses 14 through 33. Wherefore, he said, Awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ shall shine upon thee. Look, therefore, carefully how ye walk, as not as with the unwise, but as the wise redeeming the time because the days are evil wherefore don't be foolish but understand that the will of the, what the will of the lord is do not be drunken with wine wherein is a riotous behavior but be filled with the spirit of god speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody with your heart to the lord giving thanks always for all things in the name of the Lord Yehovah and, ya and Yeshua, Jesus Christ, even to the Father. <clears throat> Subjecting yourselves to another, one another, in fear of Christ. Wives, be in subjection to your own husbands as unto the Lord. And by subjection, that means submit. It's not to be a dictatorship, it's to be hand in hand, the husband and the wife together, not just one person ruling over the other one like some sort of a dictator and the other person always cowed down and treated like they are of no account. It's together. Let your strengths fill their weaknesses and let their strengths fill your weaknesses. Thereby, you become so much stronger in one rather than two separate individuals fighting for power. The husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, being himself the savior of the body. But as the, as the church is subject to Christ, so also let the wives be subject to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, 
and gave himself up for it, that he might sanctify it, having cleansed it by the washing of the water of the word, that he might present the church to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy and without blemish. Even so ought husbands also love their own wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his own wife loveth himself. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as Christ also the church. Because we are members of his body, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is great, but I speak in regard of Christ and of the church. Nevertheless, do ye also love each one his own wife, even as himself, and let the wife let his wife see that she love and cherish her own husband. Moving on to John four nine verses verse nine through thirty one. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for water from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews don't associate with people of, of Samaria. Yeshua answered her, If you knew God's gift, that is, who it is that's saying it to you, give me a drink of water, then you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Living water is the water of the Spirit of God. She said to him, Sir, you don't have a bucket, and the well is deep. So where will you get this living water? You aren't greater than our father Jacob, are you? He gave us of this well to, and drank from it, and so did his sons and his cattle. And that's water of the natural, water that comes from the earth. Yeshua answered, Everyone who drinks this earthly water will get thirsty again. But whosoever drinks the water which I give him, the water of the Spirit, will never be thirsty again. On the contrary, the water which I give him will become a spring of water inside him, welling up into eternal life. Sir, give me this water, the woman said to him, so that I won't have to be thirsty and keep on coming here to draw water. He said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. She answered, I don't have a husband. Yeshua said to her, You're right, you don't have a husband. You've had five husbands in the past, and you're not married to the one you're living with now. You've spoken the truth, sir. I can see that you are a prophet, the woman replied. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place where one has to worship is in Jerusalem. Yeshua said, Lady, believe me, the time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people do not know what you are worshiping. We worship what we do know, because salvation comes from the Jews. But the time is coming indeed. It is here now when true worshipers will worship the Father spiritually and truly. For these are the kind of people the Father wants worshiping him. God is spirit, and worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman replied, I know that the Messiah is coming, that is, the one who has been anointed. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Yeshua said to her, I, the person speaking to you, am he. Just then, his disciples arrived. They were amazed that he was talking with a woman. But none of them said, What do you want? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar, went back to town, and said to the people there, Come, see a man who told me everything I've ever done. Because, could it be that this is the Messiah? They left the town and began coming toward him. Men are called to love your wife's spirit, not just her body. Unfortunately, it's become popular to love someone bodily and neglect the real spirit, intellect, and personality of a person. That person gets treated as though they are of no account, 
like an enemy, or like what they have to say is of no consequence. Worse yet is the cycle of abuse, the breakup to make up syndrome, of treating someone nice just to get something you want from them, then harass, browbeat, control, insult, and other such nonsense the whole rest of the time, which really shows the selfish nature and immaturity of the person doing it. These are the marks of a small person who has to take their frustrations with themselves out on someone else they have intentionally lowered in their mind in order to feel like they are superior. They do these cruel acts to feel like they are bigger by climbing on the back of others. They fail to realize that this behavior is the spirit of pride, and in the end, they only become smaller and even more insignificant than the one they are deliberately downgrading. Worse yet, they end up turning the one who could have been their friend into someone who now despises their very presence and sees them as an oppressor. But there is hope for the oppressed. As Jesus sets the captives free, it is the Spirit of the Lord that destroys the yoke of bondage. Once that yoke is destroyed, The oppressor cannot put that yoke back on again, unless the one oppressed is foolish enough to allow it. And in actuality, that person would put the yoke back upon themselves by by returning to that relationship. Nahum 1 verse 13 From now on, I'm taking the yoke from your neck and splitting it up for kindling to be burned. I'm cutting you free from the chains of your bondage. Isaiah 10 verses 22 through 34 For though your people Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. Destruction is decreed, overflowing with righteousness. For the Lord, the Lord of hosts, Yehovah, will make a full end as decreed in the midst of all the earth. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the Lord of hosts, O my people who dwell in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrians when they smite with the rod and lift up their their staff against you as the Egyptians did. For in a very little while my indignation will come to an end, and my anger will be directed to their destruction. And the Lord of hosts will wield against them a scourge, as when he did smite Midian at the rock of Oreb. His rod will be over the sea, and the sea actually is the people, the unbelievers. And he will lift it as he did in Egypt. And in that day, his burden will depart from your shoulder, and his yoke will be destroyed from your neck. He has gone up from Ramon. He has come to Aath. He has passed through. He has passed through Migron. At Migmash, he stores up his baggage. They have crossed over the pass. At Giba, they lodge for the night. Ramah trembles. Gebeah of Saul has fled. Cry aloud, O daughter of Galim. Hearken, O Laish. Laishash. Answer her, O Anatoth. Madmanah is in flight. The inhabitants of Gebim flee for safety. This is the very day he will halt at Nob. He will shake his fist at the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, will lop the boughs with terrifying power. The great in height will be hewn down, and the lofty will be brought low. He will cut down the thickets of the forest with an axe. And the Lebanon, with its majestic trees, will fall. Remember, the axe is laid at the root of the tree. 
he will, this is the time when he will, cut down those who have exalted themselves. As the Spirit of God resists the proud. But the lowly, they shall be brought high. They shall be exalted. Galatians 5, starting at verse 1. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand fast, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of bondage. Now I, Paul, say to you that if you receive circumcision, which that is the yoke of man-made and man-enforced religion and traditions, Christ will be of no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who receives the circumcision of mankind that he is bound to keep the whole law, because those are the laws of mankind that deny Christ, in which we do know that we are in the times when there will be a form of religion and a form of godliness, but it denies the power of God thereof, because it quenches the Spirit of God and does not allow God to take over and rule in our lives. Returning to verse 4, You are severed from Christ, you who would be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is of any avail, but faith working alone through love. You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from he who calls you. That's the persuasion of people, those who have formed a consensus of what to believe and how to practice the faith. Religion. But if I, brethren, still preach circumcision, why then would I still be persecuted? In that case, the stumbling block of the cross has been removed. Preaching circumcision denies Christ, which Christ, the whole, the whole point of it is to attain Christ, to be more like him. It's not to be more like a consensus of people and, and to please them and, and be, you know, a carbon copy of what people have decided is faith. Getting back to verse 12, I wish those who unsettle you would mutilate themselves for you were called to freedom, brethren. Only, do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love be servants of one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you are not consumed by one another. That basically is submitting to and being, you know, being involved in the mob rule, the consensus, what everybody else wants. Our faith is not a consensus of people. Our faith is individual. Our salvation is individual. It's on an individual basis. Other people have nothing to do or nothing to say with what we, it's between us and God, not other people. Other people need to go ahead and handle their faith between themselves and God and leave people alone. Now, but I say, walk by the Spirit and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are, they wage war against the Spirit. And the desires of the Spirit wage war against the flesh. These are diametrically opposed to one another. And that's to prevent you from doing what you would and prompt you to do God's will in your life. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are plain. That would be fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, selfishness, dissension, a party spirit envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. 
I warn you as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Because these things repel the Spirit of God and make the Spirit of God not want to take residence in your temple. We are to have a clean temple, clean these filthy, wicked behaviors out of our lives. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions, and crucifying the flesh means you no longer do the things that the wicked people do. You don't love sin. You don't think about back in the sinful days of the nostalgia, you know, think nostalgically of, you know, the, the sins you used to do and love, but, you know, you're trying not to do it. But, you know, you have had your fill. You turn away from it. And you sin no more. It's like Jesus told the woman, go and sin no more. Your sins have been forgiven you. You are healed. Go and sin no more. That's what we are to do when we receive the forgiveness of God. Turn away from it. Walk away from it. And walk. Learn God's ways and walk in those ways. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. And let us have no self-conceit, which means that's pride in ourselves and our accomplishments. No provoking of one another and no envy of one another. Thank you very much for listening and God bless.